I saw a very good series on CNA. Working as a food delivery rider, are we paid enough? So if you're curious to hear exactly how much can be made as a food rider, here it is. $23.20. Compared to yesterday, this is good. The TPM right now did about 7 or 8 orders, I think, which total to about $43.55. 8 to 10 hours a day, 5 to 6 times a week. So how much are you earning now? 2400 In between, I've added some footage from Adam's channel. Adam, well filmed. Hopefully my small little shout out can drive some traffic to your YouTube channel. Listening in as you have heard, the amounts earned are actually quite little. $23 a shift, $43 a shift. You know, when I do sales, there is a science to how we hit targets. Let's use Singapore medium income as $4,500 for example. If you earn $45 each shift, if you do the math, you will realize you need 100 shifts, correct? To get that $4,500. And there's only so many breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a month. If you earn only $45 or $43 each shift, it is very likely that you are unable to reach that median income. The math just doesn't make sense. The numbers need to be bigger because we need to have some buffers also for low periods. Then how do these headline grabbers actually do it? Food delivery rider earns $8,511 with 31 days of work, working on Food Panda, Deliveroo, and GrabFood. Now this is the minority. Of course, the majority of riders actually do multi-platform. I'm saying the mi minority of riders actually make good amounts. They are really pushing their bodies and pushing their endurance level to dangerous levels. I, I would like to guess on that aspect. But I also like to cover in a sequel and discuss how exactly these high income graphic riders, what are some of the traits. So if you're curious, smash the subscribe, stay tuned for that sequel. But we need to talk about the majority of food riders, as you can see from the title for today's show. They are actually stuck in a problem, a problem that is faced all over the world. This problem is called minimum wage. Just to check with you, have you heard of minimum wage before? And if you have, do you know that 2023's minimum wage in Singapore is actually $1,750? This is an article that 12,000 lower wage food service workers will have to earn at least that. And if we think why government has mandated it, there are reasons. It's quite likely that below $1,750 is really not sustainable for one to fulfill core needs in food, transport, housing, etc. Of course, there are people who can survive on $500 a month. That is true. But if you have a family to raise, if you want a decent living, then yes, $1,750 could be really the minimum wage to survive properly in Singapore. So let's look at some of the numbers that the riders are actually clocking. This is actually a paper by Institute of Policy Studies IPS and it quotes that 23.6% of riders earn actually less than $1,000 per month. We can guess that they are definitely part-timers because if you are willing to put in shifts regularly, it is almost guaranteed you will make more than $1,000. But the problem is this, the bulk of the riders actually make between $1,000 to $1,999. This constitutes 33.9% of the pie. And when you round up everything less than the $2,000 range, you will realize that more than half actually earn less than $2,000. Minimum wage, if you look in terms of McDonald's, how much do they pay for a full-time service crew? $2,150 for a full-time service crew at McDonald's. And the good part about working there is there's free food provided. I worked part-time in Subway after graduation for a while because I thought about Subway as a franchise. So I did one and a half months in Subway. It was very humbling an experience. The pay was sucky. I think it was $5.50 or $6 an hour, but I always enjoyed that free food that I managed to get. At the end of each shift, I can make my own sandwich. So that was an experience, a uh, very humbling one that I carry forward. But back to the point that, you know, it seems very likely that a grab food rider that's not part-time would probably be better off in McDonald's. It's arguable there is because not just free food, you're definitely going to be provided with MC, leave, etc, etc. Today, I would like to bring up for discussion for everybody, what are the problems doing minimum wage job? Just in case you have a relative, you have a friend, that you want to suggest how they can do improvement, how they can reach out to a better lifestyle for their future and start a change today. Because minimum wage happens not only in food delivery, it also happens in food service like what we saw in the article just now. And I have a few problems to raise up. The first is that doing a minimum wage job, there is no room for promotion. There's no training in other skills. You know, most of the time we see career pubs growing. Promotion is the one that brings this jump in income, correct? From a warehouse assistant to a warehouse manager. 
from now a assistant director to a director. There are so many instances whereby the promotion gives that big kicker in terms of their pay. But when we do a minimum wage job, you will realize that without having joined a company with a structure for growth, there is no room for promotion, which also means there's not going to be that 10% or 30% pay jump ever. The pay is going to be stuck in the job over and over again, and this article has proven. Age will certainly catch up with everybody, and if you are doing a minimum wage job, you need to understand your working life is finite. The second problem doing minimum wage job is no bonuses. Seng Xiong was a super payer during the COVID period because we all went to shop, correct? And a news actually flashed that they paid up to 15 months of bonus when the company did very well. Which means also, if you worked in Seng Xiong for one year, it was super hectic, super dangerous also because yes, COVID, you are in the stores, is possibly more exposure. But what you get is 15 months extra pay on top of your normal pay. That is fantastic. It's one, one effort for another 1.25 times more. You think about it that way. What about Singapore banks? Right now, from right here on the ground, they are paying at least four months because banks are making a lot of money. Interest rates are going up. They are able to make more margins on their loans and stuff. So banks are paying very well. In a minimum wage job, there is no bonus. This is a big drag to anyone building finances. You think about it. A lot of people are able to save bonuses or they spend the big amounts on the cars usually coming in from the big check from bonuses. Minimum wage job, again, does not have bonuses. The third part about doing a minimum wage job is there is no per hour income growth. This in itself is bad already, if you hear it correctly, because with inflation, everything is going up. Your pay doesn't go up per hour, but then your chicken rice is going up by 50 cents. Your coffee is going up by 20 cents. All full-time jobs, from what we hear on the ground, there is definitely a small wage increment. Most usually complain when it's 2-3%. It's just not enough, few hundred dollars thereabouts. But again, minimum wage job, there is no per hour increment. What about for McDonald's? I would also like to guess that they give. That's my guess on things. That's why I do believe that someone doing a food delivery job might be better off looking for a full time job even in FMB. What we hear on the ground also is that not only is the per hour rate dropping, there is a new problem faced by food delivery riders. And they are actually experiencing pay cuts. I used to work from like 10 plus all the way until 2 plus, roughly a 4 to 4 for 5 hours work shift. But right now I just work from 11.30 to 1.30 pm, just like a 2 hour shift. Uh, because right outside of those hours, I just not getting much orders at all. Now there's so many riders in Foodpanda. So definitely the amount of orders that I'm getting compared to maybe 6 months ago is much lesser. I'm unable to find shifts. Or I'm unable to find shifts that are long enough. I can only find shifts that's like 1 and a half hour. Then what am I going to do for the next 1 hour or something? Shifts are harder to come by. And right now there is quite simply an oversupply of labour compared to the demand. Incentives have been cut. So listen in. Right. Uh, they get at least about $180 of incentive extra. And now how much will and you get? And now there's a slight drop. If you, even if you hit 100 drop, you'll probably get about $120. The fraud problem about doing a minimum wage job is there is actually no freedom. Quite ironic, right? Because I guess most who are actually in the food delivery business actually like that flexibility. You want to work this day, you work. You just oh, turn on the app, you can start working. But if you think about it, if you want to achieve minimum wage and above, you do need to put in the hours. And actually, doing food delivery is very, very time-consuming. Really? Time-consuming in what sense? Look at this sharing by Jet over here. He's mentioned that in between deliveries, there are actually big waiting periods. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, especially if one is sent to collect a food from somewhere where it's popular. A lot of times, the waiting period from what we hear from food riders is actually with the restaurant side, not with them which means it's out of their control and all they have is just a block of 15 minutes of wasted time. Time, again, is your biggest resource. You will not have new time coming up, you will only get older. And what we need to reconsider again is there is no leave, there is no MC, there's no hospital leave. Which means again, if you need income, you need to work. That reinforces that there's actually very little freedom. So all in all, it's quite obvious that I'm suggesting for anyone listening in, in a minimum wage job, to reconsider, to get out of their space and start working with a long-term plan unless you're doing you know, food delivery as a side hustle. Because when we work, a lot of times is to satisfy our financial needs. So what exactly does a minimum wage job do to finances? There are two things I can highlight also. The first is actually financial stress. A lot of times, minimum wage job workers are living paycheck to paycheck. So it feels like there's no savings whatsoever. Is that right? Uh, yes, you're right to say that. This amount comes in, 1700 It's more or less everything being spent out. This income is just to make ends meet. 
there is no emergency cash saved up for our future. And if you think about it, a lot of times minimum wage jobs are laborers. Getting injured is actually not rare, but very possible. In a food delivery situation, next year onwards, there's going to be some weaker work injury compensation act coming in. But if not right now, there is just no protection. You are injured, there's just no income. The financial stress kicks in because the bills do not stop. The second part of what minimum wage job does to finances is that it does not give anyone an ability to save up for their own retirement. And what about your retirement? Do you have any savings set aside for it? Sad to say at this moment right now, not able to yet. Food delivery staff will be contributing to CPF from 2024, but I guess this helps very little because in this income level, whatever you contribute to CPF is just still so small. The math suggests that you will not reach full time sum, which means also that your retirement nest is not going to be filled sufficiently when you reach the age of 65. You know, I prepared this whole series because I think making an impact to all walks of life is important. I wanted to share what to think through, what to improve on. Maybe there's just two little voices right now that can really help someone to try to do self-improvement. I want to share an honest, an honest big brother feedback. So there are five action steps that I've prepared. The first thing you need to do if you want to get out of this minimum wage job situation is you have to understand your fate is determined by your mindset. If you're a food service worker at a hawker center or in McDonald's, show up every day for work, show up on time. If you're a food delivery rider, push yourself a bit harder. You know of some who have worked non-stop. Instead, use your spare time that 15 minutes in between to learn 100 new things. Pick up a book on money, pick up a book on entrepreneurship, pick up a book on sales, pick up a book on investments. There are so many things that you can learn. Don't be shy about reading books when you're waiting for food because you want to improve and you want to help your future self. The second action step is to be aware that you may need to change your circle of friends. Friends who are also in a minimum wage job will want you to stay there. That's the truth of things because if you progress in life, it will look bad on them. So instead of joining that smoke break, use that time again to read, use that time again to do self-improvement. The third action step is to groom yourself properly. Sometimes getting a better job, which is a cashier in a good organization, just simply requires you to look clean, neat, and respectable. Grooming yourself not only helps you find better jobs, grooming yourself helps you find a better mate. The fourth action step is to find people who have broken through this minimum wage ceiling. Take comfort in knowing that you are not the first to be in such a job or being stuck in such a situation. There are actually stories of people who have broken through minimum wage and what you need to do is to focus on finding how they exactly did it. They could be from your circle of friends. They could be from your brothers or sisters' circle of friends. Ask around and you may actually find help. Because quite simply, if they've been through that situation, they know what it takes and maybe they can even open doors that are suitable for you. The fifth action step, take note, if you want to step out of the minimum wage situation, is to actually choose the right company to work for. Tech companies make billions of dollars each year, which means when you divide it across each staff, it makes sense to pay each staff several hundred thousands of dollars. Again, when a company is highly profitable, each staff is valued more. When a company is not profitable and making very little revenue, each staff is valued less. That's the primary constraint of how pay actually works. Jack Ma has this very good sharing that I kept close to heart and it's something that I'd like to share with you today. If you do not have to be a boss, it's actually okay. But you must know how to pick the right boss to work for. There are obvious jobs right now in the market that need labor and these companies are also highly profitable. They are likely going to take care of you if you are hired. Marina Bay Sands, RWS, Sengsong, NTC FairPrice, SBS, Changi Airport Services. The list goes on and on. And if you open your eyes and look carefully, you will realize that working in these companies are likely going to be more rewarding. This could join out be the first step to help you climb out of this minimum wage. And again, I wish you all the best. And hopefully some points raised today can help you in your journey also. Thank you for listening. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe because in the next episode, we'll be discussing on food delivery riders that make more than $5,000. What do they need to look out for? With that, I'll sign off from here and see you there. Take care as always. Goodbye.